So I coach at Oakland College in Hertfordshire. I'm the head coach of the um, WEA BL Academy team and the Under 16 National League Prem. I started coaching because I was just told I was good at it really. Um, ever since a young age I was like very vocal on the court. I'm that, you know, annoying person to play against but good to have on your team. I'm always cheering on my teammates, always trying to help people get better. Um, so yeah, I was told you should get into coaching. Um, I'm quite a confident person. Uh, I'll take criticism well and also can give it. I'm not shy to tell someone where they need to get better. Um, so yeah, that's how I started. My biggest influences are honestly just the girls around me and the environment and I'm in. Um, Oakland's Lee and Michael have obviously been a huge part in my pathway so I look up to them a lot. Um, they've believed in me since I was young so yeah I believe they're my biggest influences. And yeah just the girls around me. I wake up every day to go to work and I'm happy that I have a job that I can wake up and be like wow these girls are awesome. They motivate me every day so I call them my biggest influence as well. Um, just seeing them happy and loving life it just reminds me constantly that that's how you should live your life. My biggest challenge for me, it's probably been transitioning from player to coach. Um, just remembering that people don't know what they haven't been taught. And obviously because I'm working with under 16s and the academy, so up to 18, um, a lot of them haven't been in professional or you know university performance environments before so I have to constantly remind myself that they don't know stuff that they've never been in that situation how are they supposed to know um, and obviously because I'm still a player you just sometimes expect people to know those situations and what to do in those situations so that's one of my biggest challenges for sure. One of my key strengths is probably the experiences that I've had. Um, I obviously came through the Oakland's programme myself. Um, I played for national teams when I was younger, at under 16, under 18s and under 20s. I also went to um, the college in the States, so I've seen all different coaches, I've played against different countries, I've seen all different styles of basketball, um, so I think that's a strength of mine because I'm very unique. I've taken things from coaches that I like, what I don't like, I've obviously left behind. Um, and I just feel like I can really relate to my players because I've been in those situations and um, when they come to me and they tell me things, I can really relate and help them through things. So it's definitely a strength. Obviously, I'm blessed to be a part of this program. It has some great people on it. Um, we've really connected as a group, obviously going through this COVID year. It's really unfortunate that we haven't been able to really maximize the program and do things on the court together. And things that I learn on the Zoom calls that we've had, I can't then go and put them on the court, which is really frustrating for us all. But the program's just helped me. I've made so many connections through it. I have now several females around me that I know that I can message whenever, whatever time of the day, and they've got an answer for me and got advice. Um, so that's what I'm really thankful for. We've stayed together through this period and we've become a really connected group. The programs also, obviously shout out to Jenny and Brian. The programs brought some great people. Um, I've heard from the Australian national team coach, head coach, which I would never ever be able to speak to her personally without this program. There's been some awesome people that we've been able to connect with. So I'm just really thankful for that. Hearing different insights from coaches in different environments is really key for my learning just because um, obviously I've come and been in the Oakland's program for many years now. and. Um, so I constantly hear where we want to go as a programme and it's interesting hearing things from other places and new ideas and things that I can put into the game.
one of my proudest moments, I would say, is being asked by Leah Michael to head coach the WEABL program and the under 16 program just because I've not been a head coach at that level before so it was a great moment for me that they trust me it's Oakland's is one of the most well-known programs performance programs um, so it's a big challenge and I was very proud to be able to take that on. My advice as a coach would be to just be brave. Um, you're gonna face new challenges every day as a coach. You're gonna see things that you've never seen before. So you have to be open to learn and know that you're not ever gonna be perfect. Even coaches at the top level, there will be the game on the line and they'll call a the wrong play. And it's learning that you're gonna make mistakes and it's how you respond to those mistakes and it's being brave enough to do what you feel is right in the moment. And people may doubt you or you may even doubt yourself sometimes. Like I know when I was asked to head coach the under 16s and the academy, I may have felt a bit out of my depth because I've not been a head coach before and it was a big ask, but if I didn't say yes and turn down the opportunity, I wouldn't be where I am now. So I think it's just being brave enough to put yourself in situations that you're not necessarily comfortable with, but it's you're learning every day and it's knowing that, yeah, mistakes are there to be made as a coach and that's what you have to go through to be the I would also say constantly get feedback, be ready to take criticism, um, film practices so you can see where you need to get better um, because sometimes you're in the moment and you don't notice where you could have done things differently um, or get someone like a mentor or someone to come watch one of your sessions and just be ready to take feedback um, it's definitely not supposed to be a straight line journey as a coach so if you're just getting into it you need to learn as much as possible um, and it's not always easy if you think you're really good at something and then someone telling you that you need to actually improve in that area um, but I think it's something you definitely need to be good at. This was a tough question, but I think rebounding, I know it's weird, but rebounding is a hard skill to teach. I don't think it's touched on enough anymore. Um, I think it's sort of, oh, just go and rebound, but do you actually know how to rebound, the position of a rebound? when to rebound, um, things like that. I just don't think it's spoke about enough and it's a really hard skill to teach, especially if you're doing box out drills and things and you can see people are really trying, but it's how can I make them better at doing that? Um, yeah, and I think it's one of the things that's key in a game. You have to be constantly focused. If a ball goes, a shot goes up and you're not thinking rebound and your man just runs past you and they get an offensive rebound and score, could be a game changing moment. Um, so it's staying focused and making sure people it's drilled into their head. It's definitely a hard skill to teach. Mamba mentality by Kobe. If you've not read it and you're a basketball player or a basketball coach, you need to go read it right now after you finish watching this. Um, it's literally insane. The detail in which he talks about the game is just, it's out of this world. Like you would never realize the things it took him to be so great. Like I think when you see a player like that, you just think, wow, he must have worked so hard for that. But you just think he was in the gym putting up reps, but you don't realize the detail in which he was great from things he talks about his nutrition to what he did before and after a game um what he did he studied a referee handbook so he knew where the referees were standing on the court so he knew what he could get away with it's just absolutely insane and it just opens your mind up to what it really takes to be great and obviously being able to pick the mind of kobe bryant it would be anyone's dream um, so the book just does it for you and it's just, it's just so good. Um, one of the craziest stories, I mean, I wasn't coaching at the time. Um, I haven't really seen anything crazy as a coach yet. Um, but it was midway through the fourth and I guess the 
um, leisure centre where the team was playing just decided it was time to close. Um, so midway through the fourth, the electric hoops just decided they were going up. So that was really crazy. Midway through a game, the hoops were going up and that was the end of the game. Never seen it before, the game just cooled off right in the middle of it. <laughs> Um, I would like to be remembered as a fun coach to play for. Um, obviously, under 16 girls is that age where there's a lot of pressure on them, whether it's school, whether it's where they're going to go to college. Um, it's meeting these standards. Obviously, there's social media now, so they see all these great things within the game going on and they put a lot of pressure on themselves and I want to be the coach that makes the environment that every kid wants to be in because they just enjoy it and they just love the game of basketball. I think that that would be really special to me knowing that every girl that I've coached I've had a positive impact in, <clears throat> whether they go on to be um, performance athletes and playing at a really high level or they go on to play you know just local league it's just knowing that I've impacted them to have fun with the game and kept them going and kept them involved with the sport. And I am a no whistle coach. My voice is very loud and projects um, enough, I don't feel like I need a whistle, um, I mean, I could go back to it, I'm not against the whistle, but definitely no whistle. <laughs> <laughs>